You have to correct yourself immediately and say, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajeem. And try to seek Allah's protection from the satanic whispers. If you do this, then insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from you your prayer. But if you carry it on, prolonging your ruku' and your sujood, seeking by that the pleasures of the people, the praise of the people, then Allah will not accept it. Now, also, sometimes, another example, this particular, in the second example we mentioned, that you started doing it for the sake of Allah, then you started making or doing riya or showing off. If the ibadah is one unit, like the salah, cannot be separated, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept it. But if the ibadah, when we say ibadah means the righteous deed, the good deed, if this good deed you are doing can be separated, so part of it will be accepted, part of it will be rejected. Like what? Like let's say that you give charity, sadaqah, charity, to the poor person. Poor fellow, he came, knocked on the door, you opened the door, and you gave him something. And when you did that, you were seeking by that the pleasure of Allah. This, inshallah, will be accepted. Then, some of your friends came, and then someone knocked the door. So you told your son, see, who is there? And he came and said, there is a beggar at the door. Poor fellow. So you say to your friends, you see, this is the second one today. Now they are, the number is increasing. And you open your wallet and you say to your son, give him something. Now the second amount of money you gave, it is not charity. It is not charity. Because you did that for the sake of showing off. So your friends will know about it. So this ibadah, the sadaqah, part of it was done purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of it will not be accepted because the motive behind it was showing up. Sometimes the third scenario that after doing, and this is very important, after doing a good deed, you give charity or sadaqah or you gave a lecture or you taught the people something and you did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But after doing that, the shaitan comes to you. Shaitan, this is it. Shaitan is an enemy. He will not leave us. So the shaitan comes to you and he starts whispering. And he will tell you, you didn't do it for the sake of Allah. He will start making you doubt your intention. That I am sure, shaitan tells you, I am sure it will not be accepted. Because the motivation and the motive behind it, your, the driver behind it is not the to seek Allah's pleasure. Though when you did that, you did it for the sake of Allah. But the shaitan comes and he puts these devilish thought, satanic whispers into your mind. What to do in this case? What to do in this case? In this case, you just ignore it. This should not harm you. This should not affect you. You just carry on doing good deeds. Because the aim and the objective of the shaitan to stop you from doing good deeds. Is this clear to you, brothers and sisters and dear viewers? So carry on. Don't stop doing good deeds. Just carry on doing good deeds, inshallah, and Allah, inshallah, will accept our deeds and your deeds. Inshallah, we will, inshallah, see you in the coming episode to continue our topic. May Allah preserve you, protect you. Till then, stay with us, inshallah. Looking forward to seeing you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers, we are still, inshallah, discussing the topic of riya or showing off and today inshallah we will mention the different types of riya this riya has different types or different shades among these types is bodily riya the bodily riya or showing off using our bodies for instance in the past people religious people will go through strict diet to become weak because to look weak was a sign of abstemiousness which is called zuhud that those are the people who are not interested in the dunya 
those are the people who renounce the dunya. So to look weak, so they hardly eat anything. So the people, when they see them, they say, oh, those people are pious people, God-fearing people, people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Medina, Aisha radiallahu anha, she saw a group of young men walking, dragging their feet, and they were very, very haggard, weak. So she said, what is wrong with them? She said, what is wrong with them? Are they sick? They said, no, those are really ubad, means worshippers, means people who are leading an austere and abstemious life. She said, by Allah, I have seen Umar ibn Khattab, and Umar ibn Khattab is the real zahid in the dunya, the real person who rejected and thrown away behind his back the dunya and the love of the dunya. But when he walks, he walks strongly, his feet are firm on the ground, so those are not really, those are not really a true worshippers. And Umar ibn Khattab one day, radiallahu anhu, he also saw a young man, chap, walking, dragging his feet, his chin is hitting his chest like this, walking weakly. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he came and he hit him under his jaw. And he said, lift up your head, lift it up. You should not look weak. The true Muslim is the person because the humility and humbleness is there in the heart, not in the body. Why you should walk weakly? Walk normally. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the way he used to walk, they said you can see the stones are flying behind him. The stones are flying behind the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He walks quickly, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And even he would not turn just like that or like this. If he wants to turn Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he would turn 90 degree. He will turn completely to the other side. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was teaching this young man that this is not zuhud. This is not zuhud. The real zuhud is there in the heart. Not that you are humbling this body. So that is the bodily showing off. That you are using your body to show off. Also another form of the riya is riya with respect to the clothes. Some people, they wear dirty clothes, shabby clothes, so that people will think, oh, those people really fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Those people are really zahid, people who renounce the dunya. They're not interested in the dunya. So that is not zuhud. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you wealth, has given you money, use it. And dress nicely and eat good food. That is not against the zuhud. Because the zuhud is to have the dunya in your hand, not in your heart. Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, he had the dunya, but the dunya was in his hand. The wealth was in the hand, not in the heart. So they were using it and spending fi sabil Allah. So much so that Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu, that he, he paid all the expenses for one of the military expeditions is known as Yaysh al-Usra. And it's called Usra, which means hardship, difficulty, because there was no money. So Sayyidina Uthman, he paid all the costs, all the expenses, the horses, the camels, the spears, the arrows, everything. So much so that the face of the Prophet ﷺ lit up. And he said, Ma dharra Uthman ma fa'ala ba'd al yawm. Nothing is going to harm Uthman after today because of this good deed which he did for the sake of Allah. So to have the dunya in the hand, not in the heart, that is the real zuhud. Not that you wear dirty clothes or shabby clothes and you think this is zuhud, that is showing off. Or you wear, for instance, wool clothes, not silk, cotton one, the wool. Oh, this is now a sign of zuhud. No, that is showing off. Another type of showing off or riyah is riyah in one sense.